In most of our discussions so far, we've assumed that all our circuits are perfect, that all the resistors, capacitors and inductors are the values which we've picked and that we've placed them in exactly the places we'd like them to go. However, in reality, any two wires have a capacitance between them, even if it's very small, because they act like the two plates of a capacitor. Wires also obviously have a resistance, and perhaps less obviously have an inductance, because each wire is like a single turn of an inductor. These components, which are part of the very fabric of our wires and conductors, are called distributed components. Because the values of these components are generally very small, they usually only affect the circuit at high frequencies. However, at such high frequencies, they can be a problem and are called parasitic components. We can draw on representations of these onto a generalized block diagram, as shown on the screen. Parasitics have two bad effects on the circuit. Firstly, unwanted signals can get into places where they shouldn't be, because they can pass through the parasitic capacitances or through the magnetic fields of a parasitic inductor. Secondly, they mean that all circuits will be limited in their frequency of operation, because they contain low-pass filters, as shown in the diagram, and stop working at high frequencies. And also, because these are filters, they can exhibit unexpected phase changes at these frequencies. You should also note that although we've just been discussing input and output wires, parasitics exist internally among all the wires within the block. And there are even very small resistances between wires because there's no such thing as a perfect insulator between them. Parasitics are one reason, but not the only reason, why designing circuits to operate at higher frequencies is a more challenging task than deciding them to operate at lower ones.